Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, we're going to be going over the new limited time crisis dungeon, Coral Prison. Um, we're going to get into the team setup, but first I am going to show you the symbol enemy info. So this is generally what it looks like, and with the exception of the first boss, um, which is the Scorpion Sentinel, you can pretty much fight... Uh, the rest of them in any order you want. So there is kind of a lot of uh, room to do things differently that I'm going to show in this video. Uh, the number one thing I guess to note though is that everybody's weak to ice except for dying. He has no innate resistances. He also cannot be debuffed um, on his attack, which, you know, he does hit pretty hard. So that's kind of a thing to keep in mind. Other than that, um, Mole Crawler, he's the only one that's not weak to ice. He uses electric or earth. And as far as Sigil Break goes, you only need Triangle. And I would recommend bringing um, the Ruin Rub Blows because I think it's. I think it might be this guy. One of them basically has a counter and will try to counter Ruin Ruz. So just keep that in mind. As for the actual team setup, I will start with Tifa. So everybody's weak to ice for the most part, and that's all we're gonna be focusing on. I'm actually not even gonna focus on uh, lightning because it's only one boss. So uh, we're doing basically Holy Flame Gloves with her outfit to give her the Frostblade Arcanum. Now this here is still needing her for utility. So I'm using leather gloves. I do have them at OB6, which is quite nice because it lowers the physical attack and right out of the gate it's going to do high potency if you don't have them at ob6 it's going to do probably mid potency uh, but it should be able to stack to high so i recommend tifa you can there's other characters that can do a similar thing if that works for you go ahead and do that what this is mostly for is the worm bosses and they both will buff their uh, physical attack high potency and then do the AOE splash damage, just like in the chapter six, only now there's two of them and they can easily wipe the party if you can't deal with their physical attack increase. So uh, definitely need some sort of physical attack down. And I don't think just having one physical attack down materia is gonna be enough, but uh, you could experiment with that depending on how strong you are. Uh, she's using T uh, Shiva because she's gonna have I think the most um, ice potency, uh, level five of anybody, and that'll be good for her. These are all stat sticks um, with the exception of having at least one triangle blow uh, sigil break. Here we have Bald Eagle for physical attack and uh, ice potency. Uh, this is for HP and physical ability potency and automatic is just for general stats and that's pretty much about the best plus physical ability potency there. Sorry, I get sidetracked sometimes. Uh, and that rounds her out to about 4,000 physical attack, which is pretty good. Um, I don't think it's giant territory, but it's it's respectable. Uh, HP is, is just fine. I think 7,000 is a good threshold to try to hit. And physical defense is also a concern because there are several bosses that will do physical base attacks. All right. Coming over to Sephiroth, he is kind of our other main damage dealer. He's going to be doing the magical ice attacks. He's got 4,400 magical attack, which I'm actually pretty proud of. I think that's quite good. As far as total ice potency, he actually has the same amount as Tifa, level 5, and in his Arcanum as well. So that's pretty nice. Uh, this sword here, I mean, this is just really good. In fact, right before those banners were over, I did two more pulls to get one more guaranteed copy of this. For any of you who watched that video, I was pretty close. I chose not to go for Cloud or Glenn's weapons because I was so close to one of these, so that's what I did. Um, and then obviously, Edged Wings here for the ice damage, the ice potency. This is just kind of still a bread and butter weapon for Sephiroth. All stat sticks for magic damage with the exception of having a uh, triangle blow. And over here, um, just kind of magic attack, magic attack, uh, HP. That's, that's really, or sorry, this is ice potency and HP. And then I actually went with uh, Bahamut here, which is a little bit different. I've actually never used him yet in a run, but I did struggle with this run quite a bit and needed something with a little more oomph to it in these fights. So that was able to provide that for me. Other than that, his stats are really good. Physical defense, not 
super great, but Magical Attack is looking great. And he has more HP than Tifa to kind of make up for the lack of defensive stats. And lastly, we have Aerith. Aerith is going to be setting up for heals. We really want this for the Magical buff, um, Magical Defense buff for the first fight. You'll kind of see this. It's possible to keep going after, I mean, he can easily annihilate one person on your party. Uh, because they do kind of a really big uh, magic defense debuff to you. Uh, we're going to use this to counteract that to try to keep him alive. Because I think it's just better if you don't lose party members in the very first fight. And it kind of creates this snowball effect where you kind of keep doing better and better throughout the run, in my opinion. Uh, we do want a way to remove darkness. Because that's going to be a factor in at least one, I think, two fights, though. So, might as well put that on the healer. Uh, other than that, stat stick here for heals. And this is just, you know, the same thing. Triangle, blow, break. Uh, over here, we have healing. Uh, we have some defensive stats. We have some HP stats. That's kind of what we're looking at here. I think this is also magic defense. And, you know, that's pretty much the setup here. Without further delay... We will now get into the run. All right, the run starts and we're going to go straight to the Scorpion Sentinel. And my first piece of advice for this guy is kill off the add-on unit, the Scorching Claw on the right. Kill him off first. He does a physical defense debuff with his moves and it's very annoying. Meanwhile, we're also getting magically debuffed on Sephiroth by the actual Scorpion. So we're going to start casting Solid Man Award and kind of have this back and forth where he keeps applying... Uh, that debilitating cannon to him and we're just gonna keep buffing him back up and ultimately this will be our third solid man award right before tail laser to get us back to neutral and even with zero debuffs on this thing still hits for 4800 which is pretty significant however if you survive that you then get plenty of time to kind of get everybody back up and just get in some dps uh, he can be physically debuffed, his attack, anyway. Um, so, I would probably recommend that, which is what I'm doing right here. Just because you're kind of in a state where you're trying to get everybody healed back up, take the least damage possible. He will then go into a sigil break mode, and this is a counter mode. So, again, if you're casting magical, you know, ruin Ruz or whatever, uh, when it hits that gauge hits, he will do another tail laser. And it's an AoE one to all enemies, I believe. Okay, after that, we're going to go Ice Potency plus 30% here because we're ignoring Lightning completely this run in order to max out on that Ice so that we can have the most DPS possible. Uh, I come down here just to check. This is where the Grass Strikes are. We're not going to go fight them yet. We're actually going to save them for last because I think they're kind of easy. Uh, come up here, get our items. There's an add-on fight. It's pretty simple. And then we are going to... I kind of thought about the path for a second because this is the first time I took this specific path, but I thought it was the best one. Uh, but then we're going to come here. The reason being, um, it makes the most sense to fight Mole Crawler as early as possible since we just took a lightning debuff. And so since our lightning damage is kind of nerfed and he's weak to lightning, I figured it makes the most sense to kind of knock him out uh, so that this fight doesn't drag on any longer than it absolutely has to. I've sped this up because the beginning is very slow. It's just him doing some really low damage AoE abilities. In fact, when I'm curing with Aerith, I'm not even switching stances. Uh, he will eventually give himself an attack buff. Not that big of a deal. He does a little bit more damage, but still nothing you can't easily heal through. However, it is the next mode that's coming up that's going to start making things like suddenly it like lulls you to sleep and then all of a sudden he's gonna come out with this massive damage so he does mode showdown okay and this is where you should start saving atb on Aerith because you're gonna want to be able to buff somebody's uh magical defense so he does the tear gas and i for some reason thought that that did darkness i don't know why my brain kind of broke and then i ended up solid man awarding tifa which i shouldn't have because he clearly targeted Aerith. so just know that when he does that move it, it does affect everybody but you only need to care about the person being targeted here we have just enough time to get her to mid potency um magic defense up and again 
This Blazing Ray still does 4,200 damage, and Aerith has the highest innate magic defense of anybody on my team, which I think was in the 160s. So, you can just imagine, that can easily, and I can tell you in a lot of runs, it did wipe out whatever member was targeted. So, definitely make sure you're saving the ATB so that you can really buff them up to survive that. That's kind of his grand finale, though. You survive that just like the first fight. The rest of it is pretty simple, and you can, you know, just kind of knock him down. Here, physical defense, magical defense, plus 50% is so big. Uh, that's a no-brainer for us, so we're taking that for survivability. We're going to come over here and get our Blizzard Cocktails, but first there is an add-on fight. I'm only showing this because, again, there's the Scorching Claw. And let me tell you, if you do not take him out, he can start inflicting defense down with these guys who do physical attack moves. I've had this fight kind of get a little bit out of hand, believe it or not, in one of my previous runs. So I'm just showing it now because if you kill that guy, then it's actually really easy. But if you don't, it is possible to get into a little bit of a thing. Also, if you kill more bosses before you come fight them, it can become a little bit of a thing. Now we're going to come over and fight the worms because I think they're the next hardest boss. Uh, however, our 50% that we took to physical defense is definitely going to help. And, you know, Tifa's physical attack debuff is also going to help a lot. I am just making sure, though, that everybody has enough HP because this will be the first run where I actually kill the right worm before he does his AoE move. Every other run, I had to at least take one from each of them to the face before it was over. But adding in Mega Flare here, I think, really did help me get enough damage in. And using the Blizzard Cocktail to knock this first guy on the right down. Because the guy on the right, he's weak to ice. And he's going to be the first one that starts up his buff and starts up his AoE move. Here... We're going to take Darkness off Tifa first so that we have Omni Strike available because right here he's gathering strength. We want to be able to Omni Strike and take that off. Then we'll go get Sephiroth, and I'm not even worried about uh, taking the Darkness off of Aerith. Here, Quake Dive, I realized that I was going to do enough damage that it was going to actually kill him, which was a pleasant surprise. Uh, this setup was considerably better than the ones that I had tried previously. And one of the main differences was actually using Behemoth on uh, on Sephiroth. So that was kind of a big deal. Here we did get the uh, high potency down before he did it. Still did over 2,000 damage to every member of the party. Like I said, that, that is definitely something that is a party killer if you're not ready for it. Especially if he has uh, any amount of like medium to high potency buff on himself. Uh, that's probably like a 6,000 damage move. Here, he goes into the Sigil Break phase, and I recognize that I could have killed him before it ended. However, I really want Sephiroth to charge up that really long uh, summon gauge again, because I'm going to need it for the final boss. So, I'm actually going and just breaking the Sigils, because I think that it gives Sephiroth uh, more time to fill that gauge, and Tifa as well. So this is actually kind of really nice that this happened. It is always close in in every one that I had to do that that uh, break phase. It's always kind of come down to the, comes down to the wire because I don't have anybody that has an extra triangle break on them. But we get through it and it's not really that bad. I, I here we just took the uh, the buff duration because the only buff that we have is a magical defense buff. So for whatever that's worth. Coming into this fight, we are going to Diamond Dust right away because this is another one where if you don't kill the add-ons or if you have to take time to kill those add-ons, it can kind of get a little bit overwhelming for in the short term. However, if you kill those off, especially with Omni Strike here, I mean, this guy has almost zero ability to really do much damage. However, instead of trying to kill him again, we are going to focus sigils because what I was thinking in my mind is I just need Sephiroth and Tifa to have at least 50% of their, their summon gauge full so that I could use my summon boost items, uh, one on each, and make sure they both have them. 
uh, where so if one of them was under 50% by the end of this fight, that would kind of be a problem because I do want to use them both at the very beginning of the dying fight. But there you see, 61,000 score. I mean, so far, we have been rocking and rolling through all of these bosses. Uh, however, I can tell you, in previous runs, I've had problems against most of these bosses if things weren't done uh, in the right way. We took 50% and 50% again. That's going to really help for survivability. Dying really hits hard with physical damage. And that's another tip I'll kind of give towards the end of his video. You really want to try to kill him. Um, you don't want to have to break sigils on him, especially if you don't have one to two specialty triangle breakers. Here I used uh, ice, uh, ice buff on or blizzard cocktail on Tifa because she's using Shiva. Um, I'm getting everybody's max HP threshold as high as I think I can. Uh, some engage I used on Tifa and Sephiroth to fill it up, and then I'm also giving Aerith ATB and Sephiroth ATB, because believe me, I had died to this guy every single run leading up to this, and I wanted to make sure that I was set up to win. Here, we're starting off with Mega Flare and Diamond Dust. This is important because neither one of these on their own was enough to kill off those add-ons. And you really do not want to have to waste attacks killing those off, but it is necessary to kill them off. So this is good. We get a really nice start on Dine. The add-ons are gone, and we can just focus on pretty much the basics. Now, he will start this Molotov Cocktail, which is going to do a shitload of damage. Um, just be ready for it. I mean, if you don't switch stances, you're probably dying. Um, it's that much. Even with the stance switch here, you can see uh, we're looking at like 45 to 5700, depending on your physical defense. It's a lot of damage. But because Aerith had so much ATB, she can immediately start healing. He then stuns himself. He makes himself, uh, you know, kind of more... He takes more damage from all sources as far as magical and physical. Uh, so we can get in a lot of damage at that point. And it looks... I'm making this fight right now look really easy. Uh, another t time for darkness, by the way. And then right after this, he's going to use... He's going to buff himself. Here he's doing barrier. It can either be the magical or the physical version. And that's what it also makes it really good. That we have one magical-based... Uh, DPS, which is Sephiroth, and a physical base, because then we don't really have to care so much about this, because the other damage dealer can still be getting in a lot of damage. Um, gun Rush here. Like I said, if you have, if you get into Gun Rush and are trying to break these sigils, I can tell you with the amount of sigils there are and the amount of time you have, you are in trouble if you feel like you can't just kill him through it. Because he does a lot of damage. You'll feel like you need to do heals. It, it, I've died every time during that sigil break phase. So just trust me. You want to be able to do enough damage to just kill him and not worry about actually breaking him there. Um, coming back to a thought. I had said I made that fight look pretty easy. I can tell you I was even surprised at how much easier that fight went that time. Do not hesitate to use items. Um, do not hesitate to use those summons. Make them go. Look at this. 918,000 score with still plenty unused item bonus. I was well beyond where I needed to be. So use them liberally. Hopefully this helped clear you clear very hard Coral Prison. If it did, subscribe for future content. If you are already subscribed, just know I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.